Chapter Five of Commentary on the Gospel of John, Book One. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Commentary on the Gospel of John, Book One, by Cyril of Alexandria, translated by Reverend Philip Edward Pusey. Chapter Five that the son is by nature creator with the father as being of his essence and not taken to him as a minister three all things were made by him and without him was not anything made the blessed evangelist having overthrown the intricate objections of the unholy heretics and having completed his subtle and most exact utterance respecting the only begotten comes to another snare of the devil compounded of the ancient deceit and putting forth to us the sting of the polytheic error which has wounded and cast down many and widening the way of perdition and throwing open the broad and spacious gate of death heaped up souls of men in herds unto hell and set rich food as it were before the devil and brought before him choice meat for since the children of the greeks applying themselves to the wisdom of the world and having plenteously in their mind the spirit of the ruler of this world were carried away unto polytheic error and perverted the beauty of the truth and like to those who walk in mist and darkness went down to the pit of their own ignorance serving lifeless idols and saying to a stock thou art my father and to a stone thou hast brought me forth others again transgressing akin to them devising nevertheless a more polished error deemed that they ought to worship the creature more than the creator and lavished the glory that befitted the divine nature alone on the elements that were made by it of necessity does the divine introduce to us the only begotten as maker and creator by nature saying that all things were made by him and that without him nothing passed into being that he might close for the future the entrance for their deceits and might show to them that know him not the creator of all things and by the very words wherein he says that the creation was made might clearly teach that other than it is he who called it into being and by his ineffable power brought things that are from not being unto birth for thus at length was it possible by the beauty of the creatures proportionally to see the maker and to recognize him who is in truth god through whom all things have been already made and made are preserved against the false worship then of the greeks do i deem that he thus well arrayed the gospel word and for this cause do we believe that the only begotten was introduced by the voice of the saint as maker and creator but since it is meet to consider the crooked inventions of the heretics i think that we ought looking to their ways too to say again a little all things says he were made by him and without him was not anything made this god-befitting dignity too does he put about the son on all sides showing that he is consubstantial with god who begat him and saying that all things that belong to him by nature are in his offspring that he may be conceived of as truly god of god not as we having the appellation adventitious and accruing to us by grace alone according to the words i have said ye are gods and all of you are children of the most high for if all things were made by him he will be other than they all for in this all things there is nothing which is not seen among all things as the blessed paul too is found to have understood the all things for when in one of his epistles he was discoursing of our saviour and said that all things were put in subjection under his feet excellently does he subjoin 
for in that he saith all he left nothing that is not put under him therefore since we believe that all things were made by the son we will not think that he is one of all but will conclude that he is external to all and severing him from the nature and kin of things originate will at length confess that he is none else save god of god by nature for what will intervene between god and the creature i do not mean in regard of essence for much intervenes but only in regard to the position of anything that is in conception or what other position will the son have who surpasses the nature of things made yea rather is himself the maker for all things were made by him as by the power as by the wisdom of god the father not hidden in the nature of him who begat him as in man is for instance his innate wisdom and power but existing separately and by himself yet proceeding according to the ineffable mode of generation from the father that the wisdom and power of the father may be conceived of as truly existing son but though the blessed evangelist says that all things were made through him the saying will not i deem at all minister damage to the words concerning him for not because it is said that the things that are were made through him will the son be introduced as an underworker or a minister of others wills so that he should be no longer conceived of as being by nature creator nor will he be one given the power of creation by some other but rather being himself alone the strength of god the father as son as only begotten he works all things the father and the holy ghost co-working and co-with him for all things are from the father through the son in the holy ghost and we conceive of the father as co-with the son not as though he were powerless to work aught of things that are but as being wholly in him by reason of unchangeableness of essence and his entire kin in the absence of any medium towards his natural procession from him as though one were to say that to the sweet scent of a flower the flower itself was co-present for the operation of the sweet scent since it proceeds from it naturally but the force of the example is slight and the nature that is above all will overpass this too receiving of it little impresses of ideas since how shall we understand my father worketh hitherto and i work for not separately and by himself does the son say that god the father works aught regarding things that are and that himself again likewise works apart from the father the essence whence he is after some sort resting for so the creator would be two and not one if either work apart and separately moreover the father will be recipient of the power of not having the son ever in him and the son likewise will be seen to not have the father ever in him if it were possible that either should work apart and separately with regard to things that are as we said before and the son will not be true when he says i am in the father and the father in me for it is not i suppose merely after likeness of essence that we see the son in the father as express image or again the father in the son is archetype but we hold that the son beams forth by generation from the essence of the father and is and subsists in it and of it in distinct being god the word and that the father again is in the son as in consubstantial offspring co-naturally yet severally according to simply the difference of being and being conceived of as that which he is for the father remains that which he is even though he be co-naturally in the son as we say that the sun is in its brightness and the sun again will be conceived of as not other than he is 
even if he be connaturally in the father as in the son its brightness for thus the father be conceived of and being in truth father the son again being and conceived of as son the holy ghost having his place with them the number of the holy trinity mounts to one and the same godhead for how will god be at all conceived of as one if each of the persons mentioned withdraw into a complete individuality and while wholly removed from co-nature and essential participation with the other be called god therefore let us conceive of father son and spirit according to the mode of individual being not mixing up the difference of the persons or names in regard to that which each is but while we reserve severally to each the being and being called what he is and thus believe referring them still of nature to one godhead and refusing to hold a complete severance because the sun is called the word and wisdom and brightness and express image and might of the father for he is word and wisdom by reason of these being immediately and without any intervention of the mind and in the mind and because of the reciprocal interpassing into one another so to say of both for the mind is seen in word and wisdom and word in its turn in the mind and there is naught that intervenes or severs the one from the other he is called power again as being a quality inherent without any interval in those who have it and that can no wise be severed from them in manner of an accident apart from the destruction of the subject express image again as being even conate and unable to be severed from the essence of which it is the express image hence since either is naturally and of necessity in other when the father works the son will work as being his natural and essential and hypostatic power likewise when the son works the father too works as the source of the creating word naturally inexistent in his own offspring even as the fire too in the heat that proceeds from it it is clear then that vainly has been iterated the accusation of the opponents against the only begotten who introduce him to us as creator by having learned yea rather as minister too because of the blessed evangelist saying all things were made through him and without him was not anything made much do i marvel at the unholy heretics for whatever seems any way to undo the dignity of the only begotten and to show him second to him who begat him according to their own view this they hunt with much zeal and from all sides bring to it the drugs of their own stubbornness whatever again are healthfully and rightly said and bring the son up to the glory of the father these things they bury most surely in deep silence as having one sole aim to in vain revile him who is glorified of all the creation for when they hear that all things were made through him they hotly bring on him the name of service dreaming that the son is bond instead of free and worshipper rather than lord but when they learn that without him was not anything made they do not mount up to think aught great and marvellous of him for since it is not in god the father to create otherwise than by his own offspring which is his wisdom and power the evangelist says that not at all was made without him for therefore is the only begotten the glory of god the father for he is glorified as creator through the son for he worketh all things and bringeth into being things that are not and well will one conceive of the words without him was not anything made if he consider with himself what was said at the creation of man for let us make man says he in our image after our likeness 
for here specially one can behold in the sun of a truth not that is lowly as in a minister according to their phrase for god the father does not command the word make man but as co-with him by nature and his inseparably so to say in existing co-worker he made him also partaker of his counsel respecting man not anticipating the knowledge that is in the son in regard to any conception but as mind inseparably and apart from time manifested in the inimaged and inexisting word let god befitting contemplations again be above the reach of the example yet we say that he co-works with the son not conceiving as of two severally lest there be conceived to be two gods nor yet as though both together were one in order that neither the son be compressed into father nor again the father into son but rather in such sort as if one allowed to be co-existent in the brightness from light the light whence it flashed forth for in such examples the generator seems to be separated in idea from the generated and that which springs forth from it indivisibly yet are both one and the same by nature and the one in no wise separate from the other but above this too will god again be inasmuch as he is both supersubstantial and has nothing wholly like him in things originate that it should be taken as a image of the holy trinity without any difference in exactness of doctrine but if they deem that the word through whom said of the son can bring down his essence from equality and natural likeness to the father so as to be minister rather than creator let those insane consider and come forward and make answer what we are to conceive of the father himself also and who we are to suppose him to to be seeing that he clearly received the words through whom in the divine scripture for god says he is faithful through whom ye were called unto the fellowship of his son and paul an apostle of jesus christ through the will of god and again paul writeth to some wherefore thou art no more a servant but a son and if a son then an heir through god all these then have reference to the person of god the father and no one i suppose will rush to that extreme of madness except perchance he hold with the above mentioned as to say that the name in fact of service is reasonably predicated of the very glory of the father because the word through whom is applied to him too for the divine scripture is sometimes indifferent in regard to its words in no wise wronging the subject thereby but applying to the things signified in a less proper sense both the words themselves and those whereby it deems that they are well explained but it is well to say of those that the glory of the lord veileth speech for little in truth is all might of words unto the exact exposition of the ineffable and god-befitting glory wherefore one must not be offended at the meanness of the things uttered but must rather yield supremacy and might in tongue and keenness of every mind to the divine and unutterable nature for thus shall we be and not in small degree pious End of chapter 5